So Fractured and Altrak was just announced, and with that, 10 new cards were revealed and a new honor system, so let's jump into it. And the first thing I want to talk about is Snowfall Graveyard, along with Dunbalder Bridge. These cards are really interesting because they're like Sunny Day and other weather-based moves in Pokemon, where you basically use your ability, it would change the weather, and it would have effects on the battlefield. That's basically what this is doing as well. It's for three turns, your death rattles will trigger twice. I'm not entirely sure how they will interact together. Maybe only one can be active at a time, maybe they both can be. I'm not 100% sure. But overall, it's a pretty cool ability. Your death rattles trigger twice at last three turns. I don't think that this is going to be insanely powerful unless there are a lot more death rattle cards that are given. Okay, so I was basing this rating on what I know is around right now, so I gave it a three, but I think it has potential to be a four. Again, I have some reservations about this card because there aren't a lot of death rattles or good death rattle cards in Rogue right now. I, I've tried to play Death Rattle and Shuffle Rogue in the past, and they just both fallen a little bit short, and I don't think triggering twice will help because their abilities just aren't fast enough for the meta, but if they get stuff that does more damage or summons extra minions, this could definitely be pretty good. Next is Dunbalder Bridge. After you summon a minion, give it plus two, plus two. It lasts three turns. I think this card is okay. I rated this card also a three out of five. Um... Because I feel like if you're just gonna, if you're gonna play this, you might as well just play normal hand buff paladin at that point. And if you're gonna be doing that, you don't even really need this card. Because there are other cards, like Banner, Alliance Bannerman, right? Obviously you could run both. But think about it, Alliance Bannerman draws you a card, gives everything in your hand plus one, plus one. So potentially more minions than just this. And it also gives you... Um, a card on the board for some pressure. Obviously, you play this, you can hero power, and your hero power becomes a 3-3 for a little bit because you're summoning a 1-1, but I still just feel a little bit underwhelmed by this card. So, obviously, it'll probably see some play, and there'll probably be some, like, mid-range or aggro decks that could potentially use it, um, but I don't, I don't have huge high hopes for it. I think that the Death Rattle one has a little bit more potential. Next thing is Vander Stormpike. I think... There are two legendaries that were announced and given to us for free, or we had the potential to. Uh, if you choose the Alliance or the Horde, I'll get into that in a second. But I think this is the better of the two. If um, this costs less than every minion in your deck, reduce their cost by three. So you can put this in like a big warrior, right? And that way it won't suck as much to draw them just naturally, right? Because like, oh shoot, I accidentally drew my Troublemaker. But wait, my Troublemaker is now five man. I can just play that. Same thing with Big Demon Hunter. You'd be like, oh, I just drew an Illidari Inquisitor. But wait, Illidari Inquisitor's eight or five mana. I can just play it, hero power, hit him in the face on turn six for a ton of damage. And all I have to do is not run any small minions, which I wasn't going to do anyway. So I think this card has the most potential of the two. And it's going to lead to some pretty insane moments where it's going to be, I think, a little bit of a slower board-based meta. But things will escalate very, very quickly. Next, we have um, Drek'thar. He's four mana as well. If this, or it's a battle cry, if this costs more than every minion in your deck, summon two of them. I think that this is going to be a four, and I think Vander is going to be a five. Um, I think that this is solid. It's just the only problem is some small minions are small because they're good battle cries. A lot of small minions don't have like insane stats, and if they do, they'll have bad battle cries. So or no battle cries. So if you play them just naturally, it's not going to be that strong. And I just feel like waiting till turn four to get out a couple of little things isn't that big of a deal, right? Like he plays this turn four. I'm a warrior or priest or whatever, and priest can just like desperate prayer Zyrella. Warrior can brawl the next turn, or play any number of things like Minefield, Minefield to deal with the minions, I don't know. Uh, it's just that the minions that get summoned off of him are probably going to be 1, 2, or 3 cost. It's a little bit more versatile, not versatile, but like volatile. Um, I'm a little bit unimpressed with this card. I think that it's still very, very good, but in comparison, in terms of power level, if you were to choose what side you want to be on strictly because of which card's better, I think Vander is definitely better than Drek'thar. Next thing is Knight Captain. So 5 mana, 3, 3, deal 3 damage, honorable kill, gain plus 3, plus 3. Honorable kill means if you do the exact amount of damage to kill a minion, the ability activates, and I'm pretty sure that this can activate more than once. My problem with this is that 5 mana for potentially a 6-6 six, six deal 3 isn't terrible, but I don't think it really works well in this meta. I rated it a 2, um, which is similar to what was given here, 2.3. And I think that that's because 
it looks like it could be really good in arena don't get me wrong i think it'd be amazing in arena but in standard i just think it's kind of slow it doesn't have a tribe i don't really know exactly what it's going to combo with maybe i could make like an honorable kill based deck entirely like honorable kill hunter or paladin or something like that or i could fit it in for like a meme purpose but i feel like there are just better options on turn five but if you combo with something like vander storm pike next thing you know this is a two mana card maybe it'll see a little bit more play i don't know um let's see here gnome private uh it's a one mana one three honorable kill gain plus one attack you know it's a one mana one three can't really go wrong with that it could be used in aggro deck to trade in it could be used in, like an aggro druid to trade in because that deck trades in a little bit more than say like a face hunter which tries to go face as often as possible it could be used in just a lot of slower or not slower sorry tempo based decks that just play minions every turn because this will scale up i i put this as a four um just one mana one threes with the potential to do more are usually pretty good um next thing is the blood seeker another honorable kill card it's a two mana two two weapon honorable kill gain plus one plus one most of the time as a hunter you probably won't be hitting a minion and if you don't have a lot of healing i don't really think that hunter will very often trade into minions with a weapon do i think that this weapon has potential at a two mana two two with the potential to get better I'd say yeah, especially if Hunter gets some things that like can pump weapons up or something. So I, I, I think that this has some potential, but I think that Rindling's Rifle is still the best weapon in Hunter. Um, but I think that this has the potential to be the second best weapon in Hunter, which means it might see some play. The Headhunter's Hatchet, a 2 mana 2-2, two, two, gain 1 durability if you have a beast. I just don't think is as good as this, because let's just say... You have the Headhunter's Hatchet, it's a 2-3, and you hit face every single time. That's 6 damage, you had to have a beast on board to play it, and, you know, 6 damage. And this card, you use the first attack to hit into a minion, and next thing you know, this weapon becomes a 3-2, right? It becomes a 3-3, but you attack one, so it's a 3-2. Again, um, you kill a minion with it, and then you go face twice, again for 6 damage, over the course of 3 turns, like the Hatchet. But you also killed a minion. So I think this is just a slightly better version of the Headhunter's Hatchet. Um, I would probably play this one, but at the same time, I don't fully know if it'll actually fit in any Hunter decks. Next thing is Siphon Mana. I put this as a 4 card, um, personally. It is a 2 mana deal, 2 honorable kill. Reduce the cost of spells in your hand by 1. I actually almost rated this a 3. And the reason why I almost rated this a 3 is because you already have Encanto's Flow. And cards are already going to be insanely cheap in Mage. And one of the whole things in Mage right now is a big spell mage. Or at least that's kind of what was being promoted um, with a couple of cards that were released with the mini set. So why would I want to do this and run a card like this in a deck that wants to run mostly big spells? You could run this in like Quest, I guess. But again, you have Encanter Slow to reduce the cost of most things already. Obviously, Mana Cheat is incredible and this card is going to be good. It's just, in terms of mana cheap, this isn't as strong as something like Encanter's Flow, but let's just say Encanter's Flow down the line cycles out, because it will eventually, then I think Siphon Mana will become easily a 4, maybe 5 card, but for now, I think it's just outclassed by Encanter's Flow. Next, we have some heroes, and I'm pretty sure there will be multiple heroes, but the first one is Lightforged Carriel. Deal 2 damage to all enemies, so it's a 7 mana gain 5 armor, basically Consecrate, and then equipped a 2-5 Immovable Object. Which, or, yeah, a 2-5 immovable, sorry, it, it says a movable object, but here it says the immovable object. I just, I read that wrong. Um, it's a pretty powerful card. 2 mana hero power is, sorry, I'll, I'll scroll down so you can see it better, is give a random minion in your hand, plus 4, plus 4. Good in a hand buff paladin. The immovable object is a 2-5 weapon, this doesn't lose durability, your hero takes half damage rounded up. So this becomes something you can easily trade in with. This becomes something that has a decent amount of durability. The durability doesn't really matter, and it might be something that causes people to actually run weapon removal. Because if you have this, and you could run, like, in a big hand buff, like, control paladin style of deck where you don't even run tempo, this card could be absolutely amazing and buy you tons of time. Not to mention the fact that paladin has a good amount of healing in the deck. So you basically armor up with Karyl, and then heal up a little bit, and then use this to protect you. It's basically just like a better bull. Well, not a better bulwark, but because it could last forever or like the rest of the game, it's arguably a better bulwark. 
And it basically also makes other OTKs like Garot Rogue, if that's still a thing, um, Lifesteal Demon Hunter, basically renders them useless because a lot of the time they were doing like 36 to 48 damage. Now they're only going to do 18 to 24 damage, which is not enough to kill you, especially if you have a little bit of armor with the Light Forge carry along you. So very, very, very powerful stuff. Seven mana, I think, is fairly balanced, but that leads us into the next one. Um, but yeah, seven mana, I actually do think is fairly balanced. I think it's a little bit strong, but because of power creep, I'm okay with it. It's not like uh, a five mana card that allows you to have 20 mana crystals now instead of just 10, gives you a mana crystal and draws you a card. Yes, this has no immediate pressure on the board. So if you're playing against an aggro deck, Wild Heart Guff is actually going to be only okay if you're against an aggro deck, but if you're against a mid-range or slower deck where this mana and these insane sizes are actually going to matter, it's gonna be really, really big. I don't actually think 20 mana will actually mean that much, right? Because you have other things like Celestial Alignment, you have other things where you just play Survival of the Fittest on curve on 10 and then you can play a Carnival Clown. Um, I did put this card as a five, but I also don't think it's as big of a problem as people are saying that it'll be. Gaining a mana crystal and drawing a card and gaining five armor for five mana is honestly pretty good to get a new hero power that says draw a card or gain a mana crystal. This is broken, but I don't know how they're going to utilize 20 mana crystals unless they're just running a ton of big stuff, I guess. But if you do run this card and you run almost exclusively big things, that'll leave you very vulnerable to aggro which means that I'm somewhat okay with this. If it has a very, very clear counterplay and there's something that can very easily beat it, I'm a little bit more okay with it. It's probably the one th like redeeming quality about Quest Mage back when it was strong. Now that it's been nerfed, I don't think it'll be as strong anymore. You could play like Face Hunter or Elemental Shaman against it, just pure aggro, deal damage from hand and spells, and you'd beat it like 90% of the time. And I think that that's what's going to happen here. They're going to be playing a very greedy big build that revolves around Wild Heart Guff, and it'll be susceptible to dying early game. So as long as Druid doesn't get some miraculously, like, really, really good early game cards as well to keep them alive, I think that this will keep them in check, or the aggro decks will keep them in check, but also has the potential to be insanely powerful. So I, I, I put it a five. I'm just trying to, like, put it into perspective here. And the last thing is the honor system, Horde versus Alliance. When you log in uh, for this patch, you will have to choose between Alliance and Horde. You will be given two legendary cards, and that's what I was talking about. This is the Horde one, Drek'thar, and this is the Alliance one, Vander Stormpike. And whoever, whichever side, whichever, um, sorry, um, the, whichever allegiance faction, whatever you want to call it, wins the most or gets the most honor. I'm not entirely sure how that'll work. Maybe it'll be quests. Maybe it'll just be whoever wins the most games, yada, yada, yada. Will get a golden copy of the leader at the end. Or not a golden, a diamond copy of the leader at the end of the event on January 11th, which I think is super duper cool. I think that this is amazing because... This is something I've been saying for a long time. Some sort of big community event that will allow the community to bond over something. Right? Like, this has happened, or this is something I talked about way back when. I think that, and way back when, I mean like a year or two ago, when I was trying to come up with ways to improve Hearthstone, because Hearthstone was in a little bit of a rut at the time. Um, and I think something to have a big, like, community feeling about it could be big. I think that there was a time when you could fight the Lich King a while ago. There was a time when I didn't play that much, and it was around Frozen Throne at the beginning of it. Um, I didn't actually play that much because I was just getting into college, and I stopped playing Hearthstone for like half a year there as I was getting back into the groove of, of things and learning how to college exactly. Anyway, I thought that was a super cool event where you tried to do as much damage to it as possible, and you kind of did it as a group, and you could... Um, and you tried to see how much damage you could do to the Lich King as a, in total. And I think that's something you could do along with this as opposed to putting us against each other, which is pretty cool, choosing sides. I think that's amazing. Um, and having a community-wide, like, event could be having a big boss, right? That we all fight together and we all get to fight once a day. And depending on how much damage we do to it, um, we'll get certain rewards. Like, maybe we'll get 100 gold for every, like, million damage we do or something like that. I'm not exactly sure how it would work but they could do something. It could even be small rewards, like if we do a certain amount of damage, we get a diamond card, and it's just cosmetic. But let's say we get a diamond card of a card we don't have. Next thing you know, we just made a little bit of extra dust. Overall, 
I think that this stuff looks pretty cool. I think that because of the new um, heroes, it will inherently slow down the meta a little bit because people are going to want to try out the new heroes. And this is just, these are just two of them. I'm assuming there will be more. Um, I think that Vander slows down the meta a little bit by making people want to run slightly bigger uh, base decks. The new like land field, not land field, the battlefield based cards are going to slow down the meta because people want to do this to set up cool combos and things. So you probably won't end the game with Paladin until around turn seven or with a rogue turn six or seven here. Um, but honorable kill looks to be pretty aggressive. So that's probably going to be a fairly aggressive based ability. So overall, very excited to try out all these cards. I hope you guys are as well. And I will see you guys in the next one.